Hi, God bless you. Uh, my name is Tierney. I'm 22 years old, and I'm going to be sharing my testimony today about how Jesus saved me, how he called me out of the world, and saved my soul. And um, I'm going to pray first. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that you lead whoever you would like to see this video to this video. I pray that you will have them watch the whole thing if it's your will. I pray that they be edified in the name of Jesus. Um, and I pray, Father, that you will help me to be focused and that you will allow me to say the words that you want me to say. And I pray that you get glory from this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the Bible, in Revelations, it says um, that we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus, and by the word of our testimonies, and we love not our life to the death. So um, share. there's something powerful about sharing your testimony. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm going to start with like the first encounter that I ever really had with God, which was when I was 11 years old, almost 12, and my mom forced me to go to a um, Christian like summer camp. It was like one of those life for youth camps. I didn't want to go. Uh, I used to think I was like too cool for church. I didn't want to go to church. My mom forced me to go to youth group. Um, and I would always complain, always not want to go. I wasn't like a, a religious child. Like I believed in God. Um, but I just didn't really think too much about it, to be honest. And so I went to this Life for Youth camp, and I remember on the third night, they were like, okay, we want to, like, everybody pray, you know, individually, ask Jesus into your heart, ask to be saved. Because I remember I was just, like, watching the people around me. Kids around me were crying. They were, you know, they were having, like, this moment. And I remember just thinking, like, I feel nothing like what's going on here like I remember feeling kind of like that pressure of like everyone around me is like oh god Jesus and I was just sitting there like I felt nothing but then I heard I had this thought that was like you should pray and so I like bowed my head I remember so clearly I said Jesus I'm pretty sure that you're real so will you please forgive me of my sins it was something like that after I prayed that I heard get on your knees and I was taken aback by that. I didn't want to get on my knees. I had no intention or desire to get on my knees at all. It was like I did not want to. But I heard that voice and then I heard another voice that was like, you don't want to get on your knees in front of all these people. You're going to look weird. They're going to see you. That's going to be embarrassing. Like you don't want to do that. And then I remember after thinking and contemplating the two voices, I remember thinking to myself, yeah, I don't want to get on my knees. I don't want to. That's what I thought. I'm not going to. And when I said that, um, the voice that was telling me to get on my knees, it like, I guess it like boomed in my head, you could say. It was like, get on your knees. Like it was very... Uh, it was like a command, you know, and this is the part that's kind of amazing is like, I literally like collapsed out of my chair. Like I never was like, okay, fine. I'm going to get on my knees. It was like, I went like flying forward out of my chair, like, and my knees like slammed onto the carpet. It was not graceful. It was like, I just collapsed out of my chair and landed on my knees. And I don't know if it was like something like pushed me out of my chair or if it was just like that command from God, like my spirit could not disobey, like even though I was fighting it, like in my flesh and everything, it was like when he, that third time when he said, get on your knees, it was like, I was like, ah, like I didn't, it was just, I ended up on the floor. Like my body just was like, it just fell and even like people like saw too, like afterwards. And I was kind of embarrassed because like afterwards people were like, I saw you like throw yourself out of your chair. Like, and they wanted me to like say something. I didn't say a word. I was just like, I was a really prideful like person kind of, even then at that age. 
And so, but immediately, like when I hit the floor, I felt the presence of God. I started to cry. Um, and it was just like a really, you know, nice experience. Um, I felt like God's love for me and everything. And I just, I really was like, that's when I was like, yeah, God is definitely real. Cause I was pretty sure that God was real. But after that, I was like, no, he is definitely real. And I remember walking out of that chapel thing. And I remember, like, I clearly remember this thinking to myself, like, I'm glad that happened. I'm glad I came to this camp. Now I'm saved. I'm glad that this happened at this young age. Now I can live my life. And whenever I die, I'll go to heaven. Great. Like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I'm glad that happened. And that was it. No, like, thought about changing my lifestyle. No thought about being baptized. Nothing from there. I was just like, great. Like, that's awesome. Like, cool. Because that's what I was always taught. Like, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, if you repent one time, ask him into your heart, you'll be saved and that's it. And so I was like, sounds good to me, you know, and that was it. After that camp, I went home. I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my friends. I just went right back to my life. I was definitely like, I wasn't born again, but I believed in Jesus Christ. I seriously believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I believed that God loved me. I thought it was great but I wasn't saved. And um, that's the case for like a lot of people, especially in America. Like, I don't know what it's like in other countries, but there are a lot of people who believe in Jesus, but they're not saved. Because the Bible says you have to be born again in order to be saved. Like being born of the water and of the spirit, it's important to get baptized in Jesus' name and to receive the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, that's when God seals you. And that's really when your walk with God like really starts. That's when you when you get filled with the with the Holy Spirit, that's when you really start to have like fellowship with God. And that didn't happen to me until I was 20. But so I have one other um like experience uh that I had with God in my childhood and that I'm going to share and this was when I was like I think I was around 12 years old. I started uh watching a music video um, by the by, Lil Wayne, the song called "Love Me." I had listened to this song many times, but this is I, this time I was watching the music video for it, and I remember thinking to myself, like, this is strange. Like, this doesn't even go along with the theme of the song. Like, there were women like bathing in bathtubs filled with blood. It was a really like satanic uh, music video, and I remember just thinking, like, how does this go along with the theme of the song? Like, why? Like, what? I, I remember just thinking, like, this is strange, and then. Um, I got to the part in the song where Lil Wayne is like these, and he uses like an expletive for women. I'll just say women. He's like, these women love me like Satan, man. He said that in his eyes, like there was an effect where his eyes like went all black. And it just like stood out to me so much. I was like, why would he say that Satan loves him? Why would he say that? Like, that that's so strange like I could not think of why he would say that and so I went on Google and I was like why did Lil Wayne say that Satan loves him and obviously I came across a bunch of like Illuminati um Illuminati YouTube videos and stuff like that I started watching some and I remember thinking like is this real I feel like this is real and um because I had just had that experience with God and I was like I think this is real and so I remember I googled like Illuminati or something and I clicked on this Illuminati website and like immediately when the website opened up, like I didn't even have time to really look at like what was on the website, but it was like right when the page opened up, I felt this like intense like fear. Like I felt like something, and now that I have like understanding of um, like spiritual things, I believe like something came out of the screen. Like when I clicked on it, this presence was in my room and I was really afraid. And so I immediately clicked off of the website and I prayed because I was so afraid. I felt something. And so I bowed my head and I said, and I saw this like, like vision, like I saw red and black and like fire and just like this dark, like, and I had this understanding. It was like a revelation that like everything evil in this world comes from Satan. Like everything, anything you could think of that's evil, that's not good. It comes from Satan. And then I saw like light and like white and like light blue and 
I had this, uh, you know, another revelation, like everything good in the world comes from God. And I just, it was just like so clear to me in this moment. It's like I, could, I was seeing colors and stuff, but I just had this like understanding in that moment. And, I, and so I said, God, um, I'm sorry for looking at that, at that. I don't want anything to do with that darkness. I'm sorry for looking at that. I said like something like exactly like that. And um, right when I prayed, like the presence like left and I heard something tell me to listen to worship music. And I never listened to worship music at this time, but, and so I played How He Loves by David Crowder Band, which was like really the only worship song that I actually liked. And I played that song and I just felt better. Like the presence was gone. I felt a good presence in my room. I felt a lot better. And so you would probably think, oh, you, so I stopped listening to rap music and stuff like that after that, but I didn't. It was like, I might have not listened to it the rest of that day. I'm not sure, but I continued listening to rap music after that. I just, after that, I kept going in life. And that was really the last encounter that I had with God until I was about um, 20 years old. Actually, there was one other thing that happened when I was 19. I don't want this video to be too long, but... When I was 19, I was living in Tallahassee with some of my friends um, and we all had a house together and there was like five of us and one of my friends who was my best friend at the time and she was my best friend from high school. We were in her room and we were all smoking marijuana and just talking in her room. And um, somehow the subject of God came up about like whether or not we believed in God. And I remember my friend who was an atheist like the one that was my best friend at the time, she said, I don't believe in God. And then another girl was like, yeah, me neither. I don't believe in God either. And I remember the two of them like looked at each other and they had like kind of this connection, like we both don't believe in God. And then there was the third girl. She was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if there is or if there isn't a God. And then I said, I believe in God. And then like, I, I hesitated for a second. And I felt something like prompting me to say like, I believe in Jesus like as I hesitated for just a second and then I was like and Jesus um and when I said that like obviously now like that was even though like I was so in sin it was still just like a confession like it was something like I felt something like but I didn't know what it was I said that and then the last girl she looked at me and she was like me too I do too I also believe in Jesus she didn't actually say that but she just said me too and it, the room got quiet for a second, and then we just kept going with smoking and, like, talking about whatever else we were talking about. So that was interesting. So, like, I always believed in Jesus. I'm not, like, proud of who I was when I was in the world, but when I was in the world, I smoked a lot. Like, I smoked a lot of marijuana. I was an everyday weed smoker from the time I was, like, I think I started smoking every day around 15, and I did until I was 20 when I got saved. So, and I smoked a lot. So that was kind of what I was known for, like in high school and stuff. Um, definitely smoked a lot. I also drank. I would go to clubs and stuff. Like I had a fake ID. I think I got my first fake ID when I was like 15. And like me and my friends would be like going to clubs when we were 15. Like I was really like fast. Like I started to party and stuff young. Like so 14 to 20, you know, smoking, drinking, I used to go to a lot of concerts. That was like one of my favorite things to do. Went to a lot of rap festivals. I don't know if I mentioned, but I'm from Florida, from Jupiter, Florida. And so we would like a lot of concerts come to Miami. So I used to go to a lot of concerts. Like I've probably, I've seen like any, every rapper that you can think of. And like, these were the things I'm, I'm mentioning it. Cause like, those were the things I was most passionate about was like smoking weed, listening to music. I loved secular music. I loved smoking weed. Uh, I liked hanging out with my friends. You know, I watched a lot of like shows like, um, that people like that young girls like, like gossip girl, 90210, vampire diaries, charmed, with, which is about witches. I was really into Harry Potter when I was young. I used to like fall asleep at night listening to Harry Potter audiobooks, which my friends would make fun of me for that, but I didn't care. I was really into, into that kind of stuff. So 
you're probably like wondering like why am I even mentioning like shows that I used to watch but it's like a big part of like society today like that's what a lot of people what you do when you're home you're relaxing you watch Netflix me I would watch I would smoke I would just listen to music and that was like my life that was what made me happy that was what I did Oh, and one thing about the Vampire Diaries, I don't know. So I didn't believe in witchcraft. I didn't believe in, obviously, vampires. I didn't believe in anything like that. I still don't believe in vampires, but I didn't believe in that stuff. Now I very much believe in spirits, demons, uh, angels, Jesus, God, the devil. It's all very, like, the spiritual realm is very real. And I believe in all that stuff now. But when I was in the world, I didn't. Like, uh, like I would play the Ouija board with my friends. They would be scared, but like I would be the one that would be like trying to move it and scare my friends. And I thought it was funny. Like I didn't believe in it at all. So did stuff like that. I remember my friend used to go see psychics and stuff. And I would just be like, that is such a waste of money. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Why are you wasting your money on this stuff? Like I just, I just thought it was like stupid. Like I didn't believe in it, you know? So, and I remember one time when I was in middle school, I was at the mall with my best friend at the time. And this woman came up to me and she was like, you have this aura around you. She was like, please, please, can I uh, give you a reading? Da, 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 da. She was like persistent. Like this woman like was following me around the mall. And I was like, no, like I don't want to. And she was like, well, please just take my card. And so I took her card. Like I wanted her to scram, get away, you know? And so I took the card. And when I took the card, she was like, Okay, and then she left. Like, she was happy that I took the card, and I think I threw the card right out. So, glory to God. I was just like, but I didn't think any, I just thought it was nonsense. I thought she was just, I didn't, like, I didn't think too much into it, but I didn't believe in that stuff. But I say all this to say, like, about the Vampire Diaries, but um, whenever I would watch, there's one character on that show who's a witch. Whenever there was a scene with the witch girl, she would speak in these like demonic tongues. That's totally what it is now. I didn't know it at the time, but she would be doing these rituals and she would be speaking in this language. And I remember I used to fast forward through all of her scenes. I didn't care if it was important to the plot. I did not want to hear her speaking in these tongues. And whenever, and I remember one time she started like doing it and I couldn't find the remote. And I was like, like, I was like freaking out, but something about it, like in my spirit, I was like, and I remember like tearing my bed, like hurrying, trying to find the remote so that I could fast forward through her speaking in these tongues. So that's just something that comes, came to my mind. Like these shows and music and stuff like that, like they are of like the devil and it's releasing stuff on the people who watch. When you watch, when you listen, it's releasing stuff on you. Your eyes, your ears are the windows to your soul. Like it's, it's really bad. After like, I was, I said I was living in Tallahassee with my friends. When I graduated from high school, I went to Ole Miss for like six months. I did not like it. And I left and I moved to Tallahassee. I wanted to be back in Florida. I didn't like living in the deep South. It was a way different culture than like South Florida. And so I um, I ended up moving to Tallahassee. That's where my best friend was going to Florida State. And I was like, since I transferred halfway through the semester, I was like, I'm just gonna go to uh, the community college until I finish my associates. And then I'm gonna, uh, you know, get my bachelor's from Florida State. And that was like my plan. I was living with, everybody I was living with went to Florida State, but I was the only one in community college, which, I was kind of like embarrassed, not that there's anything wrong with going to community college, but I was the only one that was not actually going to Florida State, but I was still there like partying with them and going to all the like frat parties and basketball games and stuff like that, even though I wasn't actually a student. But also like I had to pay my own rent, like they all, their parents were paying like their rent and their parents were like giving them allowances and stuff like that. I had to work two jobs, I had to pay my own rent. I had to pay for my own food, my own gas, everything like that. And I used to smoke a lot. So I wasn't like smart about, I spent too much money on weed. I spent too much money on food. I spent too much money on going out. I wasn't like smart with my money. And so I was struggling. Like I was struggling to pay my rent. I was, I was like 19. This is the first time I was ever living independently. 
And I ended up just like not being able to do it. And I had to move back in with my mom. At the time she was living in Fort Myers. And I remember being really embarrassed. I felt defeated. I felt like I had tried to like live independently and I wasn't able to. And so I left Tallahassee, but really that was, I think God's hand was on that, you know, just like getting me out of there. And so I moved back in with my mom and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a year off of college. I'm gonna work for a year and I'm just gonna try to figure out what I'm doing with my life. And it was during like that time living back with my mom that I ended up getting saved. So when I moved back in with her, I got a job as a server, a waitress. I was working at this like fine dining restaurant. Uh, that's when I, when God first called me, when I, he first started calling me. And it happened in such a, I wasn't looking to be saved. I wasn't thinking about God. I was just one day, I think I was probably smoking, just relaxing, watching TV. I, this video popped up on my YouTube recommendations and it was about this little boy who had died and went to heaven, I believe. And something that's like stuck out to me was like, and, I, and it just kind of like, in that moment, like, it's like the veil just fell off my eyes. Just from the simple video, it was like, I remembered like, oh yeah, like God is real. Jesus is real. Hell is real. It was like, it just was like, it's just, I just remembered, like, cause I had not been thinking about it for years. And all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, the devil is real. Hell is real. Like I knew I was like on my way to hell. I knew it, even though I was like, but I believe in Jesus. So in the video, the little boy was like talking about like people in heaven. And I think the reporter asked him like, so uh, is that, does everybody go to heaven? And he was like, no, only people who love Jesus go to heaven. And I remember thinking to myself, do I love Jesus? And I remember thinking like, no, I don't think I really love Jesus. Like I know Jesus loves me. I've never thought, do I love Jesus? Like, and I remember thinking like, I don't really think I do love Jesus. Like I didn't know Jesus, I had no relationship with God. But I remember just thinking, I don't think I do. And it scared me, I was scared. I was like, I feel like if I die, I'm gonna go to hell. Like I was, I was afraid started watching different videos about people dying and saying that they had gone to heaven or gone to hell. And at the end of these, some of these videos, they would say, okay, repeat after us and say this prayer, accept, you know, Jesus into your heart. And so even though I had, I had already done that, but, and I still, even though I had already done that when I was 11, I still felt like something is not right. I believe in Jesus, but something is not right. I'm not saved. I knew I wasn't saved. I knew something was wrong. And I thank God for that. And so I, got down on my knees and I said like, I repeated after whatever, it was like a sinner's prayer, I repeated after the people on the TV. Um, and then after that, when I remember when I walked outside, everything looked different. Like I've heard somebody else say this before too, after about after they got saved, I've heard a few people say it, but it really like, I everything looked different. I was able, I was driving and I could see how ugly the cars and the road and the buildings were in contrast to God's creation. Like I could see man's creation and how it was like ugly compared to like the grass and the sky and the clouds and even just like the air. Like I could just see God's creation was so beautiful and man's creation was kind of just ugly, like sitting on top, like the road and the cars and, and the buildings were just like, and so I was like, wow. Um, and so I had a big question do I, ha once I was like, so once I'm saved, am I always saved? I was like, does this mean I have to stop smoking weed? I don't want to stop smoking weed. Does this mean I have to stop doing X, Y, and Z? Like, I was like, I don't want to stop doing these things, but I don't want to go to hell. I'm scared. I was scared. I felt this like urgency. Like, I felt like Jesus was coming back like tomorrow, or I felt like I was about to die. It was like this intense urgency and I was scared and so I started reading the Bible I read the whole New Testament and I think like two or three weeks except I skipped Acts and I don't think I read I don't know if I read Revelation I think I just read the first few chapters of Revelation but I, I was just and I was reading the Bible for one purpose am I now I believe in Jesus I said this prayer does that mean I'm saved I still feel like I'm not saved do I have to stop smoking weed 
Am I sick? Like, that's why I was reading the Bible, because I didn't want to go to hell. That was, I was scared. That was what was motivating me. I was still smoking. I would be, I was smoking. I used to keep a bong on my bedside table. I would be smoking, and then I would be reading. My face would be, like, all like this. I was terrified. I was hearing, like, voices. I thought I was going crazy. I was, it was a rough time, and it got so bad, and I, I tried to stop smoking. I remember I went out. I smashed my bong. I was like, I don't want to do this, but I don't want to go to hell. And I smashed it. I ended up buying a new one. I regretted that. Um, I couldn't stop smoking. I was so in bondage. It was like a really scary time. And eventually it got so bad that I just stopped. Like I thought I was going crazy or something. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, and I just stopped. I stopped trying to read the Bible. I stopped praying. I just stopped and I went back to life. And when I stopped... The torment immediately stopped. The voices, everything stopped. It was like, and I felt normal again. I felt like I was back to myself, but in my heart, I knew like God was calling me, but I just didn't know how to stop sinning. I didn't know how to stop smoking. I didn't know how to change. And I was afraid. Uh, I remember like going on YouTube and typing like, once I'm saved, am I always saved? And I remember I clicked on this woman and she was like, of course. Of course, if you believe in Jesus, you're saved. And I wanted to believe her so bad. But something was, something literally I could hear. She's lying. She's lying. Don't believe her. She's lying. That's what I was literally hearing that. I wanted to believe her. But it was like, no, like something is wrong. Like, because I've always believed in Jesus. Always. But I still feel like I'm on my way to hell right now. So what's going on? And it just got so bad. I just stopped. And then this was around like, I would, if I, I would guess like maybe April of 2019 when this all happened. Um, and then in like October of 2019, so April, May, June, July, August, September, October. It was like around six months after that. My grandmother and my aunt came to my mom's house to visit. I just remember at one point, like my aunt and my grandma like prayed for me and then they left and I started to read my Bible again. And then I uh, went on YouTube and got, and I found like YouTube videos of somebody telling me the truth that like, you can't, just because you believe in Jesus, it doesn't mean you're saved. If you believe in Jesus, but you're still in your sin, if you, ha you haven't repented, then you're not saved. You're still on your way to hell. You just believe in God. The Bible says, you believe there is one God, you do well, even the demons believe and they tremble. So it was like, believing in Jesus, it's nice, it's important, but it doesn't save you. Being born again saves you. Repenting of your sins, being baptized, being filled with the Holy Spirit, putting your faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross, allowing him to like guide you in your life and f reading the Bible and doing what the Bible says. That's when you know you've been like born again. And at the end of October, like October 20 something, I got in my car and I went, and I was about to get out of the car and approach these two guys to give them some money. And I felt a fear and like I, I prayed, I said, God, please help me to do this. And after I prayed that, I started like trembling and like shaking like all over my body. Like it was like my whole body was vibrating. Even like it felt like the car was vibrating. It was like, I, put, I remember I put my hand on the dash. Like, is the car vibrating? I was like, no, it's me. Like I was, and my lips were like, I was like just vibrating all over. I didn't know what speaking in tongues. I didn't know about speaking in tongues. I didn't know about baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know about that at all but I was just like shaking like like shaking all over and then I opened the car door and I got out and I remember I felt like I was floating like it was this, the strangest feeling like I felt like I didn't have a body I felt like I was floating but then at the same time it was like I was dragging my body with me I felt like this disconnect from my body then I got back in my car I was still shaking I was like what is going on? And I didn't really start speaking in tongues until a few months after that. But I, I received the Holy Spirit in my car on this moment at the end of October of 2019. After I got filled, my life 
change it was like transformed from that moment i started having fellowship with god it was amazing i was like i was like god is speaking to me like i was like it was i couldn't believe it like i was like i really couldn't believe it it was it was amazing and it just everything just changed after that moment um and i remember right after that happened i went back home I sat down on my bed, I put my headphones in and I clicked shuffle on my music. Like a Chris Brown song came on. And um, I remember like when the music played, it like hurt my insides. Like I literally went like this, like I like curled up like when I heard the music and I could hear like this like, nah, nah, nah. like I heard like this like horrible sound. Like, like I could hear him singing but underneath I could hear like this sound. It was like horrible, horrible sound. And so I ripped the headphones out of my ears and I looked up at my bedroom ceiling and I was mad. And I said, I can't even listen to music anymore. I said that to God. I had no idea what he was doing. I didn't know he was saving me. I didn't really know what was going on. I was just like, it was intense. Um, and then not long after that, um, like days or like a week later, I prayed and I said, how can I get closer to you, Lord? And he told me to move. My aunt ha lives out in the country in Florida and she has a little guest house. He told me to move. And when my aunt and grandma had come and visited just weeks prior, my aunt had said, hey, if you ever want to come live in my guest house, you're welcome. And I remember thinking, no way, I'm not living out in the country. I was like, no way. But um, when I prayed, how do I get closer to you, God? He said, move, move to your aunt's guest house. And I was like, okay. I packed up all my stuff and I left. And I was, I ended up living there for like nine months. I moved up there November like 11th, 2019. And um, so just a few weeks after I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And for nine months, I just sought the face of God. I barely left the house. I didn't work. God didn't want me to work. I was just seeking his face and my aunt, my mom, everybody was giving me a really hard time. Like, why aren't you working? What's the matter with you? You know, if you're not going to go back to college, you at least need to work. Like, you can't just sit in her guest house. Like, what is the matter with you? And I was like, I'm seeking God. I'm seeking God. And they were all like, you know, they probably thought I was crazy, but I really was seeking the face of God. And um, then the pandemic happened and I couldn't have worked anyway. Um, and during that time, I started having horrible dreams. God uh, showed me I needed deliverance. I had demons in me that I needed to be cast out. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I loved Jesus, but I needed deliverance. And I also wanted to be baptized. And then, um, I found this ministry online. God told me to go to a, a service that and the service was in Georgia. So I drove up to go to the service to get deliverance. Um, I got deliverance and then I got baptized in Jesus name. It was awesome. Well, it was a hard, it was a hard experience, but I was being led by the spirit of God. I didn't even really know what was going on at this time. But and then I went, I got baptized. I came back to my little guest house. I stayed there for, I was just seeking the face of God, reading the Bible, praying, fasting, um, everything like that. And then I ended up having to move back in with my mom for four months. And then I woke up in the middle of the night, one night, I think in November of 2020. And God told me, move to Atlanta. I moved up a couple weeks later in December of 2020. I connected with this women's ministry that was in Atlanta. I was helping out at like the services and stuff for a few, maybe like a month or two. And then that stopped. And so I was just here in Georgia, just like, what am I doing here? I thought I was moving up here to, well, I knew that God had told me to move up here, but I figured it was because of this ministry that I had been following. Um, but he just told me to, I pretty much just w like, he separated me from my family. I don't have any family that lives in Georgia. I'm out here all by myself. I'm in this little apartment. 
I'm working and I'm just seeking the face of God. And this is his will for me right now, just to seek his face. It's an amazing opportunity. Um, sometimes the things that we cry about and that we are sad about are our biggest blessings. So it's easy for me sometimes to look around in my natural life and be like, I'm not, I'm 22, I'm not in college. It's like, what am I doing with my life? Like in the flesh, it's easy to look around and be like, ah. But it's really like, no, I'm doing something that it's like with Martha and Mary, how Jesus said, Mary has chosen the good thing. This will not be taken away from her sitting at the feet of Jesus. So it's like, even though in the natural realm, sometimes I can look around and be like, what am I doing? In the spirit, it's like, I'm seeking the face of God. I want to know what God's will is for my life. I want to know his plan for my life. I want to know him better. I want to be... He, if he separated me, I need to make sure I'm obedient to that. I want to find out why I was born, you know? Like, I want to serve God, and I'm unable to do it unless I seek his face hard. Like, I see other people, and they're serving God. They're evangelizing, praying for people. They're conducting Bible studies. They're doing all this stuff. And it's like, I feel like all I can do is seek God. I can't do any of this unless I see God so much. I Like the Bible says that the the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine and neither, neither can you unless you abide in him. And it's like God has just been showing me so much in this season. Like, and if you want to do anything for God, the most important thing to do is seek the face of God. You have to seek his face and everything else comes from that. And so um, I've been learning a lot. Um, I've had my struggles like I have it's been I've been saved for like going on two and a half years now and over the course of the first like year and a half two years um, I backslid a few different times where I started smoking marijuana again listening to secular music again each time you know Jesus welcomed me back he washed me delivered me each time I learned more about God's faithfulness for us, to us, his loyalty to us, his love for us. When you're saved and you're, you know, when, when Jesus saves you, um, you know, you enter into a covenant with God and God does not go back on his promises. He doesn't go back on his covenants. That doesn't mean it's impossible to fall away. The Bible does say that you can fall away. Um, but the prodigal son, I always like read that to think it like it meant when you're in the world and then you come to Christ. But it also really applies to the backslider. The Bible says God is married to the backslider. And that is part of my testimony of like just knowing God's hand is on my life and still having struggles and just his grace and his mercy, his love, that he, if you're willing to come back, he's always willing to accept you back. And um, he's really amazing. And it was that, it was initially, it was like the fear of going to hell that really brought me to Christ. But as I've gotten to know Christ, as I've gotten to know God and know Jesus, I can really say I really love Jesus God is amazing. Sometimes you have to get to know him to really see just how amazing he is. And the more you get to know him, the more amazing you find out that he really is. And this world is evil. It's dark. It's going to burn up. Everybody who is of this world will not inherit the kingdom of God, will go to hell. Um, so it's important that you live right when you become a Christian, when you're saved. The Bible says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If you say that you have fellowship with him, but you walk in darkness, you lie and you do not the truth. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sins. So... When you get saved, it's important to walk in the light. You can't live in sin as a Christian. Um, and really, the walking in the light, 
the, the only way that you're going to be able to live righteously, to live holy, is by seeking the face of God. Praying, reading the Bible. If you feed yourself with light, then light is inside of you and you have fellowship with God. If you feed yourself with darkness, it separates you from God. It makes it so hard to serve God. It makes it, 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 it takes away the power of your testimony because Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. Not so that we could like keep living in sin and be saved. He did it to save us from our sins and help us to overcome sin altogether. He overcame sin in the flesh. And when he fills us with his spirit, he gives us the power to also overcome sin in our flesh. And he's amazing. Hell is real. I don't want to go there. I know nobody wants to go there. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, just know that it's God who has allowed you to believe in him. You could be an atheist. He's allowed you to believe in him. He's revealed to you, you know, and he's calling you if you believe in him. And the Bible says that anybody who comes to Christ, he will not turn you away. I think that's pretty much it as far as my testimony. Um, yeah, God bless you. And thanks for watching.